Hi everyone, it is March 31, 2019. I'm going to start my video with this video, but the primary topic is CPS stealing children. I posted a video on the family in Chandler, Arizona, the police breaking down the door and taking all of the children out. Okay. I will do a summary on uh, what happened, but there's more information now, and it is very concerning information. Very concerning, very concerning. Um, our world has really, we are living already in a totalitarian police state, and a whole lot of people are walking around thinking that they still live in that United States that they grew up in. No, it has changed. But I want to show you what was happening in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, the video that I posted on the military performing drills, of course at night, in Raleigh. Uh, and they didn't notify the residents. They claim to have notified a few. They didn't notify residents that this was happening. Now, this was, this is posted on um, Victorus Libertas VLTV's channel. And just look at what is going on. Americans, you are being deliberately, deliberately traumatized. This is unfucking believable. This is unfreaking believable. If I weren't watching this with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it was happening. It sounds like the world's coming to an end. Here comes another helicopter. This one has lights. Thank you for Leo posting this. Um, unbelievable, and I too will link to the full video on that. You don't notify residents of this kind of military drill? Are you kidding me? And uh, Americans really should be up in arms. They should be outraged that this is occurring. Where is the outrage? All right. I also want to tell you, police in Canada are tracking people's negative behavior in a risk database. There is so much coming out that, and it has been coming out for years, certainly, um, well, after 9-11-2001, we saw changes taking place in our country and those changes were uh, well certainly not the kind of changes that you would expect in a free quote-unquote democracy and those changes continued to become more and more obvious the changes were radical and Americans are really just, um, well, asleep at the wheel. But 
so are Canadians, so are Brits, so are Scots, so are the Irish and the Welsh and, and Aussies based on the comments that I get from all of you in other in, in your respective countries. You're saying the exact same thing about what we say about Americans. This information should horrify and outrage everybody. Uh, yeah, police, social services, and health workers in Canada are using shared databases to track the behavior of vulnerable people, including minors and people experiencing homelessness, with little oversight and often without consent. Ontario and Saskatchewan, I hope I pronounced that right, maintain a risk-driven tracking database. <clears throat> now, I believe all Western countries have this going on, uh, but here we have uh, evidence that it is taking place in Canada. A risk-driven tracking database that is used to amass highly sensitive information about people's lives whether a person uses drugs, has been the victim of an assault, or lives in a negative neighborhood, risk-driven tracking database is part of a collaborative approach to policing called the hub model that partners cops, school staff, school workers, health care workers, and the provincial government. All of these people are working behind people's backs, collecting information for interventions. Why am I including this in particular uh, with this video? Because I believe that this may very well be used to steal children as CPS does here in the United States. People believed to be at risk of becoming criminals or victims of harm is shared between civilian agencies and police and is added to the database when a person is being evaluated for a rapid intervention intended to lower their risk levels. <laughs> yeah, so this is kind of like that pre-crime thing, you know? Interventions can range from a door knock and a chat to forced hospitalization or arrest. Officials say data is de-identified. De-identified by removing details such as people's names and birth dates. That's interesting. How is it that you get a knock on your door if you're not identified? Huh. Okay, um, uh, scrubbing the data is very difficult, apparently, and if not impossible um, to remove the name. So maybe with all of the people who see this information, they're claiming that they have scrubbed the name and birth date. I don't believe it. So listen to this. In 2017, children aged 12 to 17 were the most prevalent age group added to the database in several Ontario regions, and that some interventions were performed without consent, I guess consent of the parents. Uh, in some cases, children as young as six years old have been subject to intervention. Scary. It's a tool for police that allows them to take action in situations where they previously would have been powerless to intervene. We can knock on someone's door and say, we're so worried about you, can we come in and chat? In 2017, more than 300, 300 kids between the ages of 12 and 17, 300 interventions took place 
with children in between the ages of 12 and 17. 30 for kids aged 6 to 11. I, I really do believe that this is yet another tool to steal children for sex trafficking. Oh, God. And, yeah, for their sick, sick, twisted abuse of children. Oh, man. Mental health, criminal involvement, drugs, antisocial, and negative behavior. What the hell is negative behavior? Antisocial behavior. So, you have people... Let's say you're a child at school. You're in school, <clears throat> and uh, you don't have very many friends. You're shy. Or you have a consciousness that is higher than most kids, and you just don't want to be bothered. They, they mark you down as antisocial. This is what these databases can do to people. They can destroy lives. Six years old. It does happen with children that young. Noting that police have had to come up with ideas for creative interventions for six-year-olds. Hub interventions require cops, educators, doctors, social workers to share extremely sensitive information about vulnerable people and add it to the provincial database. So I'll link below to this. You can read more details about what's happening in Canada. Okay. Before I get to what's happening in Arizona, I want you to listen to this. And when I listen to Nancy Schaefer, I swear I feel like I'm just going to burst into tears. If you don't know Nancy Schaefer, uh, well, let, uh, uh, just listen. Well, my name is Nancy Schaefer, and um, I'm from the state of Georgia in the United States. And um, thank you for your gracious invitation to join you tonight, and uh, thanks to all of you who have made this incredible World Congress of Families number five in Amsterdam possible. It's a privilege for me to join you tonight and uh, to be with you in some pro-family uh, policy here. Uh, I will share with you on the unlimited power of child protective services. I served in the Georgia State Senate and after four years of viewing the ruthless and unsparing actions of Child Protective Services, also called CPS, which I will use tonight, I wrote a scathing report entitled, The Corrupt Business of Child Protective Services. <laughs> Thank you. The report cost me my Senate seat. Here's some copies of the report, if you'd like to get one. However, there are causes worth losing over. And this is one. I'm going to, uh, uh, to talk about some of the problems and then some realistic, maybe, solutions uh, for families and children, and uh, maybe look to some steps that we can take. This is not to say that there are not those children in wretched situations who need to be removed. There are, and we all agree. But tonight, I'm talking about those children removed from their homes intentionally for profit. Children are seized unnecessarily from their families due to the federal aid created in 1974 entitled the Adoption and Safe Families Act. It offers financial incentives to the states that increase adoption numbers. To receive the adoption incentives or bonuses, 
Local CPS must have more children. They must have more merchandise to sell. Funding is available when a child is placed in a foster home with strangers or placed in a mental health facility and medicated usually against the parents' wishes. Parents are victimized by the system that makes a profit for holding children longer and bonuses for not retur returning children to their parents. This is abuse of power. It is lack of accountability. And it is a growing criminal political phenomenon spreading around the globe. Oftentimes, but not always, poor parents are targeted to lose their children because they do not have the wherewithal to hire an attorney or fight the system. Being poor and lacking proper housing does not mean your children should be removed. CPS has redefined poor to mean psychologically inferior. Therefore, it is in the best interest of the child to be removed. Best interest, of course, has also been redefined at the child's expense. It has been reported over and over that six times as many children die in foster care than in the general public. Once a child is legally kidnapped and placed in official safety, the child is far more likely to suffer abuse, including sexual molestation and or rape. Case workers and social workers are often guilty of fraud. They withhold and destroy evidence, and they seek wrongly to terminate parental rights while being protected by state immunity. There is a huge bureaucracy made up of judges, court-appointed attorneys, guardian ad litems, social workers, state employees, court investigators, therapists, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, foster parents, adoptive parents, and on and on, who are looking to the children in state care for their job security. Okay. <clears throat> I have a link below. You can listen to the remain remainder of this video. This is a huge, intricate network, professions, professionals. These are people who are working to steal children for profit and to be used as sex slaves. And it's our own agencies doing it. Now, a lot of people will say, oh God, Carol, you are, you've really lost it now. Nancy Schaefer made this her mission. This is what Nancy Schaefer is known for. Exposing CPS. She was a Georgia senator. What happened to Nancy? On Fox 5, former state senator Nancy Schaefer and her husband Bruce were found dead today at their Habersham County home. Fox 5's Justin Gray is here now with more. Justin? Yeah, Russ, former state senator Nancy Schaefer was well known for championing conservative causes. Tonight, GBI crime scene investigators are at her northeast Georgia home. They're searching for clues that might tell them what led to the sudden and violent deaths of Ms. Schaefer and her husband. And I ask that you please rise with me for a moment of silence.
The announcement was made around 7.30 this evening on the floor of the Georgia General Assembly. The bodies of former state senator Nancy Schaefer and her husband Bruce were found today at their Habersham County home. Investigators say both had been shot. Preliminarily, it looks to be a murder-suicide. Uh, the GBI has six agents on the scene, two crime scene specialists. Uh, there will be a thorough investigation. Punch 11. Mrs. Schaefer was a former Atlanta mayoral candidate. She was also a two-term state senator who represented the 50th district, including all her parts of eight North Georgia counties. Mrs. Schaefer left the General Assembly after losing a North Georgia Republican runoff in 2008. She founded the nonprofit Family Concerns, Inc. in 1986. Schaefer was an opponent of abortion and gay marriage and fought for public display of the Ten Commandments. And in 1994, Mrs. Schaefer was the Republican nominee for lieutenant governor. The 73-year-old was also a former first vice president of the Georgia Baptist Convention. Nancy Schaefer and her husband moved to Habersham County in North Georgia after living in Atlanta for 35 years. They were parents of five children, four sons, and a daughter, Deidre. All right, thank you, Justin. No mention of CPS. No mention at all. This woman, uh, she was so courageous and tireless in her effort to expose CPS, to protect the children, murder, suicide, with five children and grandchildren. And you see this woman, does she look like, uh, or should I say her husband actually, I did videos and posted them on Kafka Winston World and I got into uh, digging into, you know, her life, her husband's life. They were happy. They were a solid couple. Murder, suicide. <sighs> well, this is what happens. CPS has been stealing children, putting them in very dangerous foster care homes where they are raped, where they are sexually abused or physically abused. This has been going on for decades and we can't get this stopped. We can't get this stopped. Why? Because Americans love living their delusion that this kind of stuff doesn't happen. And it certainly is not you know, a network of judges and doctors and psychiatrists and CPS and social workers. No, Carol, come on. It's a conspiracy you're talking about. Conspiracies just don't happen. Oh my God. And then when you say, please look into it for, for the sake of the children. And they don't. And they don't. That's why Canadians... You really need to be very concerned about this tracking system. And they seem to be targeting children. Okay, well, I also will link below to these two incredible interviews. Uh, journalist goes undercover as foster parent. What she uncovered will shock and enrage you. There are so many videos on YouTube about CPS parents who have had their children taken away. Um, all right. So this is on Victor's Libertas VL TV. Thank you for the work that you do. Another interview on the same channel, jaw dropping interview with award winning journalist, Megan Fox, exposing CPS child trafficking. You would think adults, would do some research to find out that everything people have been saying is true because they would be concerned about kids, all right? Uh, well, you only get adults activated when you have a mass shooting. But the incomprehensible numbers of children being destroyed in because they're taken away from their parents, taken away from healthy homes, loving, caring parents. They don't seem to be too concerned about. So this is what's happening in Chandler. 
And this is really... Uh, all right, uh, let me go down to give you just a little bit of the summary. Uh, I have a video posted on my channel. I'll look for it and drop the link below. The incident began February 25 when the mother took the two -year -old, her two-year-old boy to the Southwest College of uh, Naturopathic Medicine Clinic in Tepe, uh, according to Chandler police records. The toddler's fever had spiked to over 100 degrees. The doctor asked if the child had his vaccina vaccinations. The mother said no. Concerned about uh, the lethargic child with a fever and lacking vaccinations, that, that child could have meningitis. The doctor instructed the mother to take the child to the emergency department at this medical center in Mesa, according to attorneys, on at a March 7th court hearing following the removal of the children. Uh, doctor, The doctor called DCS after learning that the mother did not show up at this uh, medical center. A DCS work, caseworker called police asking for a welfare check. Three hours, three hours the police were trying to get inside. Um, they didn't have a warrant, which uh, it, apparently in Arizona now, as of Well, I'm not sure. Maybe it um, becomes law in July that the police have to have a warrant to get inside somebody's home uh, to do the, these welfare checks. Or it went into effect in July. I'm not sure. But July of last year. But three hours the police were trying to convince the father to exit the home and allow them to check on the child, whom a doctor had told them may have a life-threatening condition. Could I just point out that this doctor claiming that this child may have a life-threatening condition, if that was the case, then the mother heard that sometime in the afternoon. Now, these police are at the door uh, late at night, and at 1 a.m., they break down the door to uh, gain entry. If it was life-threatening, don't you think the police would have broken down that door immediately, learning that the parents did not want, uh, they were, I think, asking for a warrant, they didn't have a warrant, um, and there are a lot of parents now, they know what CPS is, and they don't want any involvement with CPS, would I open the door if I had children today? Today, knowing everything that I know? Mm, probably not. So the police have released an edited video of what took place. An edited video um, of the officer repeatedly telling the father they need to check on the child. It's life-threatening, so you're going to stand out there for three hours. When the doctor said it could be life-threatening during the afternoon, uh, no, I'm sorry. Something else was going on here. We need you to come outside and talk to us. If you don't come out and talk to us and we have to deal with this, make this even worse than it needs to be, then those kids will be taken away and you guys are going to be in some serious trouble because as of right now, you were told by the doctors he needs to go to the emergency room. The mother, after uh, bringing the child to the doctors, the child's temperature went down and she brought the child home. Okay, the father told the police, the child's fever broke, he's doing fine. All right, um, the officer said, I talked to the doctors already and they said this could be a possible life-threatening situation. 
It is not life threatening situation. It's not a life threatening situation, the father said. 11.30 p.m., the caseworker informed officers that DCS planned to obtain a temporary custody notice from a judge to remove the child for emergency medical aid. After 1 a.m., when officers kicked down the family's door, officers, they carried a shield, while another was described as having lethal coverage. Officers pointing guns yelled, Chandler Police Department, and entered the house. After speaking with two older children without their parents present, the caseworker told officers it was necessary to obtain a temporary custody order for all the children to seek medical care. So they took all three children to the medical center. Doctors found the toddler had a respiratory virus that can cause serious illness in young children. Um, that's all we get to know. After being in three separate foster care placements for about, this is what they did. Three separate foster care placements for these children. The children were allowed to stay with the grandparents. The parents are allowed to see the children at the grandparents' home. A juvenile court judge has said that the family must comply with all doctor's orders. Vaccines? Uh, do we live in a free country? Okay. Clearly it was not life-threatening. If the doctor, if CPS, if the police really believed that it was life-threatening, they would have taken action immediately. But they didn't. They didn't. And how do you, as a judge in the United States of America, uh, order parents to comply with all doctor's orders? What is this about? All right, I believe that this is about getting those kids vaccinated, actually. Um, that's one of the reasons for this. But if the parents don't want those children to be vaccinated, now they have to comply? Their children weren't vaccinated. The father said that he and his wife will follow all DCS's, uh, that's Department of Children's Services, which is just under the umbrella of CPS. Child Protective Services, um, that they'll follow all of the recommendations, including full psychological evaluations, <clears throat> despite having no history of mental health issues. He doesn't know if the charges will keep his children from coming home. Um, he's scared. What is he scared of? Well, now, uh, this started February 25. It is now March 31, and the police have recommended that the parents get picked up and arrested for child abuse. Really? Okay. Um, when the children were taken, they were all seen by a doctor. They were all fine. Why were they not returned to their home? Why were they traumatized with three foster care placements. Why did the police have to traumatize these children by busting in and breaking down the door? They have recommended child abuse domestic violence charges against the parents who refused to take their feverish child to the hospital as a, as a doctor had ordered. So now you have to comply with doctors. You got to comply with the police. You got to comply with doctors. You got to comply with the system. And if you don't comply with the system, your children get taken away and perhaps 
put in a permanent foster care situation and the parents get arrested. What are they being arrested for if the uh, DA agrees to these charges? The abuse, not taking that child to get the medical care that the doctor had recommended. Oh, these are not recommendations. These are not suggestions. Get it now when you hear I suggest you take this child to a medical center. That's an order. That's what this country has become. Why? Because Americans don't get involved. Court order and police action to remove the child were legal, according to the Chandler Police Department. What else are they going to say? But they write that on their Facebook page. Now the police have Facebook pages where they're posting information. Hey, we did this legally. Great. Okay. Um, lawmaker who helped craft a law requiring the Arizona Department of Child Safety to obtain a warrant before removing children from their parents has called on the DCS and police to admit their failure in the handling of this child welfare case. This is a complete miscarriage of justice and a shame to the state of Arizona. Police did not fulfill uh, a republic, uh, I guess a newspaper, a republic public records request submitted March 18 for the police body camera footage. The police, this is what the police, the, the sergeant uh, at this department said, the police-worn camera footage is not ready for release. What we released is our own video production. Wow. Oh, sounds kind of like uh, they're, they've got a producer and a director and a, it's Hollywood. Our own production. The case has made international and national news, calling into question police's use of force for a child welfare check. Families across the country have called the case a battle over parents' rights to care for their children versus the power of child welfare officials, police, and doctors. Arizona Department of Child Safety officials have not responded to the Republic's questions about their policies for child welfare checks and warrants and whether or not the handling of this case uh, was in line with those policies. Townsend said she fears the family was targeted for choosing not to vaccinate their children. In Arizona, a parent may decline vaccinations for their child based on personal, religious, or medical exemptions. I wouldn't be surprised if the two weeks that DCS had these children they were already vaccinated. I called on DCS to immediately return the children who are also being traumatized due to this misdiagnose. The child did not have meningitis. That's what the doctor was claiming. Uh, high fever could have meningitis. Life-threatening situation. Bring that child to a medical center. Child's temperature goes down. Mother decides, okay, my child's going to be okay. She was right. She was right. The child was not diagnosed with meningitis. That, that child should have been brought back immediately. Why were all three children taken? God. So, this law that took effect in July, Arizona lawmakers designated limited circumstances for removing a child from their parent without a warrant. The DCS must have probable cause to believe a child is at imminent risk of harm, and there's no less intrusive alternative to remove the child, or DCS must have probable cause to believe a child is a victim of sexual or physical abuse. Um, okay, well, so now, I suppose an attorney for DCS could argue they did have probable cause. The doctor said the child may have a life-threatening illness. 
and instructed that parent to bring that child to a medical center. So, the child's father said neither he nor the child's mother had been arrested, and they were unaware Chandler police were recommending they be charged. And the father is scared. I'm sure the mother is scared. He doesn't want to go home. We were visiting with the kids. This was an interview with this, uh, with the Republic, I believe. He doesn't want to go home. He was visiting with the kids. I'm scared to go home now. I don't know if there's cops waiting there to arrest us. This is scary. And we had a positive day with the kids today. Uh, the father said that they met with Chandler police investigator last week. The interview went well. He said, this has gotten way out of hand, really, for no reason, and we're going to try to prevent this from ever happening again. He thought the case would be closed, had a positive interaction with DCS uh, this week. They acted like we we're going to get our kids back, and now the police are recommending child abuse charges. Since the Republic reported about police forcing their way into the parents' home, and DCS taking custody of the three children, the mother and father have appeared in the news media, including inside addition, police recommended charges as retaliation for the parents speaking out for their rights and their children. That's what the father fears. Yeah, you speak out and well, what happened to this incredible woman? Murder-suicide. They took out her husband and she for speaking out about the horrific abuse of children who should not be taken from their parents. And this is what we're looking at. This is what we look at over and over and over again. And unless Americans stand up, stand united, because these children are being traumatized, this will only continue. And more and more parents will face what these parents are facing. Chandler Police Department releasing their video right now um, response to all the media attention that this case has gotten. It got so big in the media that they're trying to cover their butts and save face. He didn't answer the door when police knocked because it's his constitutional right not to allow police into his house without a warrant. All right, guys. Please circulate this. Please circulate this. Now, I also want to say to the few that I, well, have not been able to uh, communicate with um, regarding this case, a uh, subscriber and someone else that the subscriber got me in touch with, something's happening with Gmail, um, I don't know, but there's communication disruption going on and I just look guys this will take Americans standing up this will take Americans fighting for their rights with more and more parents having to deal with this and the numbers are huge please do not ever think that oh wow what a shame but it's not going to happen to you that is naive thinking and the children Okay, it's all adults, whether they're your children or not, whether you have children or not, it is 
all adults' responsibility to protect children. Not in the way CPS adults do. But all adults, yeah, we all have a responsibility here to one another. So we all have a responsibility. A whole lot of people, I guess they just don't see it that way. But um, you're not seeing it that way. Well, don't be surprised if the police come barging into your home and your state CPS takes your children. Nothing could be more horrifying, traumatizing, heartbreaking. All links are below.